What made you decide 10, 12 years ago that you needed to go all into AI? Well, the, the company was founded to uh, pioneer a form of computing called accelerated computing. And the first application was computer graphics. And the first application of computer graphics was video games. Now, I just said it in a way that sounds perfectly reasonable, but in 1993, accelerated computing was a new idea. 3D graphics for PCs was a new idea. And 3D video games was a new idea. None of the three existed. And so if you're trying to build a company, that's not a good strategy. You, you don't go, you know, the three, three, three low probability things depending on each other is, is uh, that's how we got to 30 days from going out of business. And, and so uh, we, were, we were always looking for uh, ways to uh, uh, get the adoption of accelerated computing in more than more more applications, and and uh, over time we we generalize the the platform to be able to do more domains of computing, but beyond just computer graphics. Computer graphics is a form of parallel computing, but is a highly specialized form of parallel computing. We expanded it to image processing, and then we expanded it to particle physics and fluids and so on and so forth. And so we're const constantly expanding its reach. Uh, the the uh, 2012, uh, several researchers reached out to us and, and needed help to uh, create a, a, a way for their algorithms, which was deep learning, to be able to work with our architecture called CUDA. And, and we were delighted to, to help, even though in the beginning it, it sounded a little far-fetched. Um, but when the, when the results turned out to have been so effective, it, it, took, us all, it took us all aback a bit. And, um, and like everybody else, you know, we paid attention to, to uh, the breakthrough of AlexNet. But I, I think that the, the great decision that we made, and this is, this is a bit of a personality of ours and, and, a, and a characteristic of our company, when you see something, something important, you have to ask yourself, um, but why? Mm -hmm. And you, you try to keep asking the but whys until, until you're at, at foundation, until you're at first principles. And, and what, we, what we properly and accurately predicted, uh, this is about 14 years ago, is that deep learning is not just for computer vision. Deep learning could be a you know, universal function approximator. And so the question is, what are the interesting functions that we would like to uh, be able to uh, create predictive models for that we don't have? Well, the, the, vast, the vast universe of interesting problems to solve, if we had a, function, a universal function approximator that all we had, all we needed to do was give it the, uh, the end result and it will go learn how to go predict it. And, and uh, uh, we came to the conclusion this was gonna change everything. And, and we bo boiled it all down and uh, we, we came to the conclusion that chips would be changed, systems will be changed, operating systems will be changed, networking will be changed, the software will be changed, how you use the software will be changed, how you develop the software will be changed. And, and uh, we, just, we just kept at it for you know, a decade and we uh, um, uh, scaled up computing by about a million X in that decade. Just to put in perspective, Moore's Law in its best of times would be a hundred X in a decade. We were a million X. And so we drove the computing cost or we, and the converse, the inverse of speed up uh, down so, so much that one day, you know, AI uh, researchers uh, realized they can just, you know, scrape the whole internet and train a model with all of human's knowledge. And that, that you know, ChatGPT evolved, and it's just incredible. And, and it's everywhere. And it's everywhere right now from, you know, a lot of us are looking at applications, everything to, I was joking with you, that my wife is a research professor at Caltech, and they're using GPUs to look at these uh, dense networks of seismometers. But um, th that's had implications for the folks in this room, right? Yeah. Because we are seeing electric demand, which had been fairly flat to, you know, to low for many years, now really taking off. And so it's giving you, I think, an interesting perspective on the relationship between our sector and yours.
So just about your thoughts around what are we doing? What, do you have concerns about the approach we're taking? Advice you have? Uh, how do you think about it? Yeah, um, let's see, probably in no, uh, um, a, a couple of things. The first thing is, is uh, uh, computing has been using a general purpose approach now for 40 years. You know, started about 60 years ago with IBM System 360. Uh, the modern high volume general purpose computing started with the PC revolution. And, and you have to imagine you're using a general purpose tool to solve every problem. And you know, it's not sensible that you would use a general purpose tool to solve every single problem and expect that, that tool to be energy efficient. And in fact, uh, we now know that it's not energy efficient. It's in, in fact extremely energy inefficient by not, or, not just one order of magnitude, but several orders of magnitude. And, and so, so the first thing that we, we're doing is that we're accelerating every application we can. And when we accelerate an application, not only do we speed it up, we reduce the cost of computing, we reduce the energy consumed by, you know, a lot. And, and of course, that would suggest, as a result, the amount of energy we use would go down, but in fact, it doesn't. And the reason for that is, is when you make something cost effective, if that's something that is, is valuable, then the consumption of it would go up. And in fact, it is. For the very first time in history, that computer that is used for accelerated computing that NVIDIA makes is also the same computer that generates something of incredible value. Everybody in this room, you're, you, you were vital to uh, an industrial revolution that transformed atoms, oftentimes water, apply energy, fire, and it transforms it to electrons. And the instrument that you use to do that is called an AC generator. It was invented by Nikola Tesla. The version before that was called a dynamo, the DC version. Uh, the AC version became, made it possible for all of you to generate your value, transform atoms to electrons, and distribute it far and wide, and, and uh, because it's AC generation. And so, so, of course, that was your industrial revolution, and we built a whole bunch of other industries on top of that. One of the industrial revolution that I was part of started about 30, 40 years ago, which is producing something that's invisible. And we call it, as you know, um, well, back then it was nobody imagined that you could you could actually produce something like that and sell it. But today, software industry is a three trillion dollar industry, and so that is our industrial revolution, which then led to this one. And this new industrial revolution takes raw material. That raw material is data. We process it, we refine it, and we distill it down into an intelligence, a digital intelligence that embeds all of this knowledge and intelligence into these tokens. And these tokens are what you enjoy when you're interacting with ChatGPT. All these words that are being produced, that are generated, the next word that's being generated, comes out of the computer as a token, as a floating point number. And so this new, this new thing that's being produced has great value because it encodes intelligence, it, it embeds intelligence. And we're now producing at a fairly large volume. This input, the input of, our, of this new industry, requires your output. What co comes out, what goes into this new intelligence generator is the output of your AC generator. So your AC generator produces electricity that goes into our AI generator, which produces floating point numbers we call intelligence, digital intelligence. And because, of the, because this digital intelligence, as we know, has so much value to humanity, the consumption of digital intelligence is gonna go up. And we're producing it fairly cost effectively. And so uh, this is going to be the next driver of fairly significant energy consumption all around the world. Now the challenge for us is to figure out how to go and create that energy. And one of the things that, that you should keep in mind is that Today's energy is built around where society is, where, where population is, where the grid is. Uh, in the future, you'll, you'll probably generate electricity and generate energy um, uh, near grids and, and not near grids. 
and and that's something to consider as you as you um, as you do this because you have to keep in mind that that AI doesn't care where it goes to school. It doesn't have to be near population. We consume it near population. And so we're still gonna require a lot of electricity and a lot of energy um, near population, but it can, you can also uh, be, create uh, quite productive energy, you know, off the grid, uh, not, not off the grid, but away from the grid today. Yeah. It's interesting, and that was a, one, I think, of your underlying thoughts on this is that, I agree with, as you make this computing power more and more cost effective, maybe bending the curve down, but it's actually then generating even more demand. Do you see do you see a limit to that? Do you see a place where you know there's created so much intelligence that now you're looking at just marginal development, or do you continue to see this almost exponential curve? Or mm -hmm. Do we just not know? Well, I I would say that. Today's energy consumption is limited by um, the energy that's that's required to move atoms, move things, right? You translate electrical energy to uh, mechanical energy. That's one, one use. Uh, another use, of course, is translating it to um, electromagnetic energy, light. And so, so you're, so that's the, and, and, and the, the uh, the limits of that consumption is kind of limited to humans, the number of people. You know, you're probably indexed to population, is my guess. But the interesting thing is that the next thing that you're indexed to is uh, the value of intelligence. It's not in it's not indexed to population, and and um, uh, it's probably indexed to industry size which ultimately has some index to population, but it's indirectly so. So the industry size that we will now serve is about $100 trillion. And so you, you take the 100 trillion, because that's every industry. Every industry requires intelligence. And so the question is, what is digital intelligence as a proportion of those industries that would be considered to be of value? And then you take that digital intelligence and you now, uh, in, order to, in order to create that digital intelligence, you need electric energy directly. And so now, now you're going to be indexed to um, to a larger percentage of the world's industries. My my guess is that that um, uh, you know energy consumption will go up um, quite substantially, but the the implication of the intelligence that is created would reduce waste, which reduces um, you know hopefully less carbon. Uh, hopefully less waste, material waste, and um, uh, hopefully as a result, greater productivity, which as a result increases the size of industries. And so I, I think um, uh, the, the future for digital intelligence is quite, ho quite high, and therefore the, the future for uh, energy is quite high. NVIDIA, long known for its gaming prowess, is now a major player in the AI revolution. Their GPUs, originally designed for graphics, are now the driving force behind groundbreaking AI applications in diverse industries. In healthcare, NVIDIA's AI is transforming medical imaging, enabling faster and more accurate diagnoses. AI-powered drug discovery is accelerating the development of life-saving treatments, and personalized medicine is becoming a reality thanks to NVIDIA's ability to analyze vast genomic data. The financial world is also experiencing the NVIDIA effect. AI-powered risk assessment tools are helping institutions make smarter decisions, while fraud detection algorithms protect consumers and businesses alike. Even high-frequency trading relies on NVIDIA's GPUs for lightning-fast execution. Manufacturing is undergoing a revolution with NVIDIA's AI-powered smart factories. Predictive maintenance reduces downtime, quality control is more precise than ever, and supply chains are optimized with AI-driven insights. The energy sector is also reaping the benefits, as NVIDIA's AI helps to optimize power distribution, integrate renewable energy sources, and improve overall energy efficiency. This widespread adoption of NVIDIA's AI across industries isn't just transforming these sectors, it's also fueling investor excitement and driving stock growth. As AI continues to revolutionize our world, 
the demand for NVIDIA's high-performance computing solutions is only expected to rise. The applications of NVIDIA's AI are seemingly limitless. From autonomous vehicles to personalized healthcare, from smart factories to sustainable energy grids, NVIDIA's technology is shaping the future. For investors, this represents a unique opportunity to participate in a technological revolution that's just beginning.